from Port de Paris in southern France. Welcome to the GCN show. From the crusher and the tusher, welcome to the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show. From the Tour de France, welcome to the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show. This week we asked the question, is this going to be the closest Tour de France in years? We have some great Tour tech and we delve in to the crazy world of concept bikes. You can win a bike, hold on, we'll tell you just how. And we round up some of the best stories that you should know about from the cycling world in cycling shorts. The Tour de France must always resemble something of the wacky races to non-cycling fans. I mean, if there's not tales of drug use or motors on bikes or spectators wearing mankinis, and I mean mankinis and not speedos, then there is always going to be something else. Yeah, this year has been no different. We had a genuinely horrific, if slightly farcical, crash for Adam Yates, where the inflatable banner that marks one kilometre to go collapsed on him as he was cycling underneath it. Why did it collapse? Because it had been unplugged accidentally by a spectator. I tell you what, and those things collapse a lot faster than I thought they would. They're pretty heavy as well. Well, by the look of it. Something that isn't heavyweight though, was Chris Froome's first ever punch. And we think it is his first ever punch, not just his first ever punch on a spectator. After a spectator carrying a Colombian flag got rather too close to him on a climb. We should explain what we're doing. We've got a recreation of the Froome moment here. They'll, they'll be able to guess, mate. Come on. Ciao, bye, Ale, Ale. <laughs> i tell you what, I felt quite good. <laughs> Aside from the farcical side of stuff though, the racing has actually been genuinely very intriguing and it's left us thinking that this Tour de France could be the closest ever. Well yeah, it certainly looks like it at the minute. So we've had nine stages in the lead up to the rest day and the top ten are separated by just one minute. I actually did a bit of research, right? believe it or not. I went back through the previous 15 editions and never has it been anywhere close to being as close as this in the last 15 editions. So, what is going on? Well, I think it's similar to the reasons that people are blaming for more crashes, which is that technological advances and training advances mean that it's not just the leaders who are fitter and faster, or who are on better bikes. Entire teams are getting better year by year. I think raising the level like that means that early on in races, we aren't gonna see big splits. I think the racing is just gonna be closer for the first week or so, and then, if we do see splits, I can see it going one of two ways. They're either going to be massive cracks, so kind of people who were in contention are going to be way out the back, or we're going to see it continue to be really close right up to the finish line. Can yeah, to find out. well, I can't either, but I actually think I disagree slightly with that. I think there's a tactical element coming into play here. We know that the final week of the Tour is going to be one of the hardest ever. Alberto Contador certainly seemed to think so before he unfortunately pulled the pin. And so I just wonder whether riders like Nara Quintana are just holding something back and waiting to land the killer blow in that final week. And Quintana's teammate, Alejandro Valverde, certainly seems to think so. He spoke to Andy Hood of Value News and he said, and I quote, there is still a lot of tour and one must attack when it's the right moment. And you do it when it feels right and you can never know when. <laughs> I think Valverde has kind of completed his transformation into cycling's very own Yoda, into his old age, although he is still very fast, of course. Yeah. What we want to know is, do you agree with us? Is this going to be the closest tour in years? If not, why not? And if it is, why is it going to be? Let us know down in the comments. Caption competition now, and last week's photo was this one. Which you didn't have permission for. Which we didn't have permission for, but we used anyway. I've chosen this one, which is my favourite. It's from Chris Kue, and he says, it's not exactly Chippo's muscular skin suit, is it? No, that might be a good point, Chris. But anyway, congratulations. You've won yourself a GCN bottle with that. One of our new Camelback bottles. If no, only that's... because it gives us the opportunity to put a picture of Chippo and not of Simon on screen now. Yeah, well, Chippo probably looks good Thanks, at speed as well, anyway. Right, next up, we've got this photo. Lastly, do you want to get started? The stress of the mountains has put years on Peter Sagan. That's quite good, mate. Nice work. Now, if you think you can beat last year's effort and win yourself a GCM bottle, an exclusive GCM bottle nonetheless, then make sure you get your competition entry in the caption section down below. Do it. The caption section, comment section. It is the caption section underneath the GCN For the GCN show it is, yeah. Use it. Don't abuse it. Tech of the week this week, and we've been getting our hands on some riders' helmets at the Tour de France, including two new ones. 
This is safe for work, by the way. Over at Team Lotto NL Yumbo, we have seen some new helmets from Bell. Check it out. This has got the uh, MIPS technology on the inside. And if I'm not mistaken, that looks like an aerodynamic, but yet yeah, vented helmet. Looks like there's a, a layer of something sandwiched between the polystyrene there. That's quite an interesting touch. I wonder what the tech behind that is. <laughs> Presumably better impact protection. Now you may have seen this used by a few of the riders already at the 2016 Tour de France, but this is the specialised Prevail 2 helmet. They made a few improvements over the previous one. Incredibly, it's even lighter. The Prevail 1 was 200 grams. They've shaved 10 grams off that, so it's down to 190. It doesn't sound like a huge amount, but I guess it is 5%. The whole profile at the top here is apparently much lower, but it does go a little bit further down to the side. And part of the reason for that design on the side is to improve, improve the acoustics, i.e. how the wind sounds when it goes past your ears, so you don't get so much wind noise, which actually in the peloton could make a little bit of difference. Now, both those look very cool, I'm not gonna lie. But then you sometimes think, Tom, that bike design just hasn't really moved on, you know, in the last, like, 200 years. No, no, I don't. No? no. And the spokes are, like, so last millennium? Last millennium? No. No? No. Well, that's funny, because what I really want is a Cyclotron. Well, that is pretty bonkers. Kickstarter has not disappointed. Although I'm slightly concerned that the 55 backers of the Cyclotron may end up slightly disappointed because that looks, looks like it might be quite a long way from the finished article if you watch it weaving about all over the road there. It does, but it's really cool because I don't think we see enough concert bikes anymore. No, you know, true. Cannondale and Specialized used to rock one out for the major trade shows every year. Yeah. We had the inline skate bike. Truly bonkers. Insane. And then we had the surf. Yeah, that was pretty nuts. Canyon actually recently rocked out of their EcoSpeed, which I happened to find, it was just lying around in their marketing office when we went to snoop around their factory a few months back. They wouldn't let me ride it. Specialized F-U-C-I, something in the spelling there, that's a pretty cool bike. Yeah, that is pretty cool, although I personally would never ride a bicycle with a windscreen. It's just a personal policy I have. But Specialized have done one that I would ride, the Scrambler 74. Have a look at that, that is super cool. In fact, that is probably the only e-bike I could ever ride. And if I had one, I'd probably commute to work on it every day because that is, that's just wicked. So cool. Before we leave tech this week, there's been some talk about Chris Froome riding a slightly redesigned fork. So the theory goes that what they've done is they've increased the rake of the fork, which means that the front wheel sits further in front of the bike, which means that he can go with his crazy descending style and perhaps attack on descent. So it'd be really, really interesting to know actually if the bike was designed to make Froome more comfortable and faster on descent, and therefore, if his attack on Stage 8's descent was pre-planned. Yeah, we did have a look at our Pro Bike video, and although it's probably impossible to tell, that fork, to me, that looks a little bit raked out, Tom. There's a new vital stat coming soon to GCM Pro Bikes, which is fork bike rake. length. Boom. It's time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week, and as ever, been some absolutely brilliant hacks and bodges. First up from Darren Haig, who has sent this in on Twitter. He broke his Ultegra DR2 front mech, so he decided to experiment with a bit of carbon fiber, and look what he's done. That is very cool. That's, that's, that's so some cool. serious hacking. That's a great A hack. It's almost better than a hack. Jonathan Noblet, Jonathan Noblet, at Shut Up Jonathan on Twitter, has sent in a custom Go Zwift keyboard that sits down on his drop, so he can power up, get directions, speak, team radio, reverse, and look buttons down on his drops. That's very cool. Now, the execution may be not quite there yet, but still, that's a definite hack for effort. And there's a possible aftermarket remote button for your Zwift option. Jonathan, go for it. Now, next up, Paul Morrison. That's a classy hack right there. Something that Lloydie could get involved in. He's plugged his handlebars with a champagne cork. If we ever wanted bar ends as well, I'm sure Dan could sort us out. Yeah, he's got quite a large selection of uh, corks. So believe. Finally, Joshua Lim sent this one in, and he says, remember that GCN hack a couple of weeks ago where someone had put pads in a saddle? I do, I called it a chamois over a saddle. Okay, and he sent a link to this, which is the 2015 new mountain bike riding saddle cover cushion space memory cotton bike socket sleeve. So someone is now selling a chamois to go over your bike seat and charging $43. 
up to $56.57 if you go for what must be the deluxe, or maybe the big version, I don't know. That is definitely a bodge, but thank you very much for sending it in anyway, Joshua. Now, if you want to submit anything to Hacks and Bodges, use the hashtag GCNHack and choose your form of social media. Please let it be Twitter, though, because it's nice and easy. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. We're going to start this week's Cycling Shorts with more world-class taking the mickey from world champion Peter Sagan. Sagan does Rocky. Check it out. Ak máte silu snívať, máte aj silu premeniť svoje sny na skutočnosť. While all eyes have been on the Tour de France this week, the world hour record has actually fallen. Or rather, actually, in this case, it might be an entirely new made up one because Kevin LeBay from Wevelgem in Belgium has just set the brand new world cargo bike hour record. So, yeah, check it out. 45 kilo laden beast. And he actually clocked up a seriously impressive at 35.9 kilometers per hour. That is that's swift, isn't it? And that is one pimped out cargo bike too. Nice one, Kevin. Now, last week we asked the question, is the Tour de France more dangerous than ever? And it seems that a few of the German professional riders, Marcel Kittel and Tony Martin to name two, agree with us or think so too. So they've written an open letter that set out a few proposals to improve safety in professional cycling. One of them, which is switching out motorbikes for mopeds, does seem pretty logical. Yeah, yeah that. it does. Another one includes adding inflatable balloons above traffic islands and traffic furniture to increase visibility. And I think and I think Adam Yates is going to be with us on this one, Si. Yeah. We're, not, we're not so sure. We think the fewer inflatables you can have in racing, the better. <laughs> yes. But Matt has actually caught up with current third place on GC, Dan Martin of Ethics Quick Step, on this very subject. So let's hear from them now. I think we were fortunate as far as the weather conditions, but also, the, I mean, the tour, although some of the finishes weren't exactly super safe, like, they're about as safe as they've ever been at the tour, I think. So I think that's, that, that's kind of, that's very much played a part in the in the close nature of the TC battle. And, and I think it's good like that. I mean, you've got all the best riders, apart from obviously Alberto unfortunately crashed, but most of the best riders are all still in there with the fights and it's it's been decided on the road instead of actually hitting the road or on the road, you know? So it's, the stakes are high and modern day cycling has been decided by seconds now. I mean, look at Catalonia. I mean, I jumped on the podium by getting bonus seconds. Dauphiné was a matter of 19 seconds after eight days of hard racing. And it's, the tour could be decided by seconds as well this year. So of course guys are going to be involved in the finish. The sprinter scene's getting angry with the GC guys, but then again it's the sprinter scene's making the gaps in the finish by having their lead out men drifting backwards, sitting up in the middle, in the way. You know, it's 50-50 it, it's as far as who's to blame. But yeah, I mean, maybe there should be some kind of truce that all the GC guys kind of sit, yeah, we'll, we'll all sit 50, 50 positions back. And to be fair, the last sprint finish, it was a little bit more like that, you know? There, were, there was a group of GC guys and we all lost four or five seconds. and. Yeah, maybe that is the safest way to do it. We'll finish cycling shorts this week with the news that Yam cycling rider Lee Howard might actually need a new pair of shorts. He tweeted this after stage nine of the tour. Have a look at that. That top speed of 122.7 k's an hour. That's 75 miles an hour. It's faster than I drive in my car because I keep to the speed limit. <laughs> Competition time now. And in case you missed it last week, we're currently giving away a Canyon Ultimate CFSL 9.0 bike in Movistar team colours, plus a Power 2 Max power meter to go with it. A whole bike plus a power meter. Incredible stuff. Enter now. Yeah, but competitions don't end there for this week. Oh, oh no. no, this being the Tour de France, we thought we'd take it up a notch as well. Muckoff are giving away five of these ultimate bicycle care packages. So in there, we have got a sponge, some bike polish, uh, some lube. Got some brushes. Nice. A cloth. Of course, muck off. Yeah, and that stuff, dry trickling, that's good shit, all that. Finally, hydrodynamic lube, which was developed with Team Sky. This is on Chris Froome's bike. Nice. How do you enter, Tom? Well, links to both competitions, side are down in the description below, or you can find them by clicking the I up there. And, yeah, geography, location is no limit. Enter wherever you are in the world. We will pick the winners at random from the correct answers. And if you win it, we will ship it to you. Nice. And share Dan's, it with your uh, Dan's got one of these under his desk, you know. I always thought it was where he kept his hairspray. I think he's got his hairdryer in there as well. 
his industrial hair dryer wouldn't fit in there, mate. Amateur. The toughest stage race in the Women's World Tour concluded last week. How about you got a bit of donut on your mouth? Right, you. The toughest stage race in the Women's World Tour concluded last week. The nine-stage Giro Rosa was won by Megan Garnier from teammate Evelyn Stevens and ahead of third place, Rabo Lib rider Anna van der Broek. Yeah, and it was an absolutely fascinating race. Perhaps the highlight was stage five that took him the fearsome climb of the Mortarola. And it was Mara Abbott of Wheel High Five that absolutely smashed that. She put two minutes into the field on just one ascent. But an impressive ride nonetheless from Megan Garnier it meant that she took the overall lead the following day, a day in which her teammate Evelyn Stevens absolutely smashed the four categorised climbs to take the victory. She also then took victory on the individual time trial and to take her tally of stage wins to three for the race. But it was the impressively consistent Megan Garnier that took the overall, despite not actually taking a stage victory herself. I'll tell you what, off the back of that, you, I just can't see past the US team for the Olympics, which are coming up soon. No. Garnier, Abbott and Stevens on a road, real road race course that favours climbers. Yeah, that is a dream team, isn't it? Yeah. Serious. Now, what about the other race that was going on, the Tour de France? I'm sure you are all up to date with the results so far. So why don't we pick out the most impressive bits for us? Was it Cam's Renaissance? Was it Steve Cummings' sniper-like breakaway win? What was it for you, man? I'm going to have to go for Cam, I think. Really? Yeah, I think you know he caught a bit of flack in recent years for not winning as much as he did earlier on in his career. And yeah. he's come back, he's shown that he's still got it. He's still really fast and that he can adapt to the newer, slightly more aggressive style of racing that we've seen with GC teams getting involved at the end of races. I just think it's been incredibly impressive and it shows what a class rider is. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with that. For me, though, I think Greg Van Avermaet uh, deserves the, uh, the prize. He is a very classy bike rider himself. The way in which he took that stage victory and the yellow jersey was mighty impressive. But it was also his defence of the yellow jersey on the stage that finished over the Col d'Aspin that impressed me as well. I was very pleased to see him spend that time in yellow. That was cool. It's time now for Wattage Bazooka. <laughs> and to award this week's Pro Wattage Bazooka, we've actually got to go to France. We're here in Andorra on the rest day of the Tour de France and the Wattage Bazooka this week goes to Steve Cummings for that amazing solo win on stage seven of the Tour de France. Steve. There's your t-shirt. Have yeah. you got a, few, got a few words for us? Ah, oh, thank you very much, as always, for your all your support. And I love the t-shirt. It's beautiful. I'm going to wear it now. Put it right on. Have a shower and put it on. Well, there you go, mate. Well, there you go. I don't want to get it dirty. Don't get it dirty now. But there you go. Watch yeah, his yeah. bazooka thank of the week. Much. Thanks, Matt. Thank Good you. stuff, and uh, best of luck for the rest of the tour. Thank you. Thanks. Our GCN viewer wattage bazooka goes to Josh Raimundo from New Jersey. Congratulations, Josh. Josh finished his first ever Group A ride and he got his first KOM in the bargain. Nice work, Josh. Now, if you want to be up for a nomination for Wattage Bazooka, simply submit your effort on any kind of social media using the hashtag Wattage Bazooka. And when I say any kind of social media, I basically mean Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah, and Twitter. <laughs> Dom's tweet of the week now, and I really like this one from Bernie Eisel. Hanging out too much with at Mark Cavendish gives more grey hair every year. Proud he kept fighting today. They've got a funny dynamic, those two, haven't they? Check this out. Cav tweeted uh, on the morning of the rest day, despite his help last week, I was still on the verge of brutally killing Bernie Isle last night. You've never heard snoring like it. They are like a genuine married couple, aren't they? Amazing. Not married. Cav and Bernie. And then finally, for Tweet of the Week, if you haven't already seen Latour data on Twitter, then you've got to check it out because they've got some really, really cool infographics going on, including this one showing Peter Sagan descending to catch up with the Tour Peloton. So the two lines on the graph represent speed. Sagan, going pretty swiftly down there. Check it out. That is cool. It's hugely impressive just because he's actually, it's not like he's faster at points. Clearly there's a technical section here and he's sustaining a speed about 10 kilometers an hour faster than the other jersey group. It's cool. And then imagine Lee Howard doing that. It's time for comment of the week, and there are a couple underneath the Shimano first ride video, which caused a lot of controversy. First up, John Fitzpatrick said, Sai, your sock game is garbage. And Max McClellan followed up, Sai, I must say, you have a solid shot, sock and shoe gain, you should be proud. Yeah, a lot of controversy under the Shimano video about my sock and shoe combination. Just, I was just experimenting. 
Not sure whether it felt good or not yet, but anyway, watch this space. But more importantly, what about the group set? A lot of really, really interesting debate about that. A few people wondering whether or not it'd be worth upgrading to the new Shimano Duro-Ace group set. To those people, I'd say not all that many people actually sell their group set and then buy an entirely new one. I think the really exciting thing about this new Duro-Ace group set is actually what it's going to allow bike manufacturers to do, which is design bikes in a slightly different way that could well make them better. So that's why I think this group set is important, not because it's a massive shift from the previous version. But yeah, anyway, another controversy, which I can really imagine why it was a controversy. Are you ready for this? This is under six things that you should leave to the pro cyclists. We've got Ben Round. Please tell me I didn't just see Dan's hairy plums at 2.49. To which random bike trips replied, we all did. And then King Soup Turbo said, oh Lord Jesus, I was hoping it was his hand. Shudder. Now, on your behalf, GCN viewers, we've done some research. We think it's Dan's hand because it has a fingernail. We hope it's Dan's hand because it's got a fingernail. On the channel this week, on Wednesday, we've got how to climb like a Tour de France pro. Tour de France riders, if they want to win the overall, will have a body fat percentage of around about five, sometimes even less than that. And that's not something that they can sustain for the entire year. So the trick is to arrive at the Tour de France as fit as you've ever been, but also as lean. On Thursday, we teamed up with our mates over at the Global Mountain Bike Network to learn three key mountain bike skills that can help all of us road cyclists out. Now you don't have to use exactly the same bunny hop technique as a mountain bike where you lift front and then back wheel. With a road bike, you can have to react a bit quicker than that. So lifting both wheels at the same time should be okay and the bikes are nice and light. And on Friday, it's Ask GC Anything. Nice. Saturday, we have a pro bike direct from the Tour de France. On Sunday, Lloydy investigates descending on your top tube, which is definitely worth a watch given what Froomey's been up to. And then on Monday, I tell you six quirky things about bike geometry that you probably didn't know. And despite all that content, there is going to be more. Oh yes, because we're out at the Tour de France, not literally us right now, but GCN, and we are bringing back loads of videos, so keep your eyes peeled on the channel, because there's going to be a lot of stuff to watch. It's time now for Extreme Corner. And I appreciate we've already seen it before, but it is definitely the most extreme thing that has happened all week. Here is Adam Yates riding in to a large inflatable again. Okay. Oh, that is brutal. Who would have thought riding into an inflatable would do that kind of damage? That is horrible. horrible. Now, on a lighter note, before we leave the GCN show for this week, we've got some exciting news over at the GCN shop because we've got new stuff. Oh yeah, now despite the fact that our kit is nearly sold out, we've got more in and we've got these new core shorts. So, still say GCN on them, still made by Santini, but they're going to be slightly cheaper. But they look pretty nice, mate, don't they? They're very nice. Look at that chamois, how cool is that? Of course, to match the core jersey. So this is the kit, if you think that our super aero pro level team kit that you see us in in videos isn't quite for you, but you still want to get your hands on some GCN kit, the core range is your thing. Yeah, so head over to the GCN shop. And we've got our very nice limited edition yellow GCN hoodies there too. You're rocking that, mate. If you'd like to check out some more GCN content, click up there to check out Chris Froome's bike. And click down there to check out Cy and Dan comparing carbon bikes to aluminium bikes. Both worth a watch. Yeah, and before you leave this show, do make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do that, you can just click on the globe. 